scaling your web application can be a little tricky, but fortunately enough, there's something that can help us out with this, which is called Amazon Web Services. It's called the EC2, which is the Elastic Cloud 2, and that's basically a virtual server that Amazon is allowing us to use on their servers, and we are billed only for what we use. So this allows us a lot of flexibility for scaling out our web application so we can handle any amount of traffic that we receive. And we are, again, only billed for what we use. So I'm gonna show you how to set up a blank Laravel installation with an EC2 instance. And what I've done now is just logged into my AWS management console and you'll see an EC2 button here at the left and you click on that and then we'll want to launch a new instance. So we'll click on the launch instance button and it'll bring us up with a wizard asking us uh, what kind of uh, install that we want to go ahead and do. I'm just gonna choose the classic wizard and I'm gonna go here and click on the Ubuntu server. I'm gonna choose the 12.04 Ubuntu server and in the future, if you use something different, this, these configurations should work. But if uh, you want to use the 12.04, you can just follow along. So I'm just gonna continue through these steps here. It doesn't really matter um, where we want the instance at right now. And I'm just gonna continue through these steps. And then perhaps I will give my instance a key, which I'll just call it Ubuntu server. And I'll give this value Laravel install. And you can really name these key values anything that you would like. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to create a new key pair. And this key pair basically allows my machine to recognize or allows the server to recognize my machine so that way I can SSH and uh, do other things to log into my virtual server. So I'm just going to call this key pair Laravel. And I want to click on create and download. And then I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to Bring that over to my desktop. So we've got that done. And the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is create a new security group. And this is going to allow us to SSH into our server or uh, view it via HTTP protocol or even access it via MySQL. So I'm just gonna call this group name Laravel and the group description, a group for Laravel installs. And I'm gonna to want to SSH into our application, so I'm gonna add this rule. I'm also gonna to want to access our application via HTTP, so that way we can obviously go to the URL and view our web application. And then I'll also want to add another one, which is just MySQL. So after I've done that, then I'll want to click on Continue. And then I'll want to go ahead and launch our server. And I'm just going to close this right now. And you can see on our screen that our virtual server is being initialized and it's basically being installed for us. So shortly we should have a virtual server, an Ubuntu virtual server set up for us to use for our web application. So after our server has completed installing, we will see a green running state under the state column. So what I'm gonna to want to do is click on the checkbox next to this instance, and you'll see that we have our new URL here, which is kind of a long URL, but you can use domain mapping to link your .com domain to this instance. But for now, this is just going to be our temporary URL. So what I'm gonna to want to do is SSH into our server. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up terminal. And what I'm going to want to do is find the location where I put my key pair, and I put that on my desktop. So I'm gonna just go to my desktop. And we can see that we have our key pair there. And then in order to SSH into our server, I'm going to copy this URL. And then I'm gonna type in SSH and the SSH-I and the key name. And then since it's an Ubuntu server, uh, the user that we're gonna use is Ubuntu. And then we say Ubuntu at, and then that's at the EC2 domain URL. So I'm going to say, yes, I want to authenticate it. And that is correct. Uh, okay, so we actually need to set our permissions for our key pair. So it's basically telling us permissions 644 for Laravel.pm are to open. So what we need to do is change the permissions to 400. We can simply just say chmod. 400 laravel.pm. 
And now let's run that command again to SSH into our server. And now you can see that we've successfully SSH into our new server that we've just created. So I can go ahead and see the uh, structure of the server and you'll see that it's basically just a blank Ubuntu server. We have our var, our bin, and all the normal fol folders that we would expect from a blank Ubuntu install. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is install Apache. And I actually have a little cheat sheet for me right here and I will paste this below the video. And so to install Apache, I'm just going to simply say apt-get install Apache 2. And what we'll want to do is make sure that we've updated our apt-get. So I'll run sudo apt-get update fix missing. So I'm also going to post all of these lines that I'm typing uh, below the video in this article. Okay, so after that is all updated, then let's go ahead and install Apache again. Okay, so now that I've installed Apache, I can go ahead and test it by just copying this URL and I can see it works. This is the default web page for the server, which means that we've successfully installed Apache on our Amazon EC2 instance. So that's a good start. And uh, let's move on to installing the latest version of PHP. And you can simply copy and paste all of these lines into your terminal if you would like. And basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the latest version of PHP, and then I'm going to run a sudo apt get update again, and then I will install uh, PHP 5. Okay, so I will want to install PHP 5. And some of this might take a while, so for the video's sake, I've just kind of skipped ahead, just so you can see after I've got done installing PHP 5. Uh, the next step that I'm gonna to want to do is install the PHP 5 mcrypt extension, which is going to allow us to use a lot of features in Laravel. And the final step is to install MySQL. And what I'm going to do for this sake is I'm just going to uh, keep the password just as blank because uh, I'm basically going to terminate this instance after I'm done anyways. And this video and creating this server is basically just to show you how you can do it on your own. You'll probably want to enter in a password for your MySQL, uh, for your MySQL root instead of just keeping it blank. So next let's install Git so that way we can download the latest version of Laravel. All right, so I'm going to download the latest version of Laravel inside of my uh, www folder. So I'll need to navigate to var slash www, and in there we have the index.html, which is the file that showed the it works. It's just a uh, standard index.html that Apache creates. So I'm going to create a new folder and call this Laravel. Okay, and then I may also want to uh, log in as the root user, so I'll just say sudo su, so I can create a new directory. And so I will go into that directory and I will do a git clone of the latest version of Laravel into this directory. After we have that, then we'll want to install Composer. And then we'll want to run a composer install. Okay, so now that we've successfully installed Laravel and uh, did a composer install, let's go ahead and check our URL right now. If we go back in here, we can still see that it has the, it works, the standard index.html file. But if we navigate to uh, our URL slash Laravel, what we would expect is just a directory structure because we actually need to set our virtual host to point to the public folder of our application. But what I'm gonna do just for simplicity's sake is just make our root URL point to that public folder. So inside of my terminal, I will want to navigate to our etc. directory, Apache 2, and sites available. 
And inside of this directory, we have a, a default config file. So I'm just going to open up that file. And we see that the document root is var www. I'm going to make the document root www slash Laravel or the name of your application, whatever you wanted to call it. And then inside of the public directory. So I'm going to go ahead and save that file. And then I'll want to restart Apache. So after I do that, if I come back in here into Chrome and refresh my page, I'm actually going to get a file put contents because our directories for our storage have not been given uh, correct permissions. So let's go ahead and change that right now. I'm going to navigate to my Laravel application, which is in var www slash Laravel and go into our app folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a recursive uh, permission of 777 for all the folders inside of storage. So if I go ahead and go back to our URL and refresh it, you can see that we have arrived and we do have a new install of Laravel on our EC2 instance. And um, before I finish this video, there's one more thing that I'm going to show you, which is that you could actually connect to your EC2 instance, your MySQL via SQL Pro or whatever other kind of MySQL application that you were using. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect via SSH and I'm just going to call this Laravel and my MySQL host is just going to be the URL. And the username that we set was just our root and we didn't give it a password. This is where you would put in your password that you set specified for MySQL. And the SSH host is just going to be our URL again. And before when we SSH into our server, we used the username of Ubuntu. And then the final password, we're actually going to select the key here and we're going to navigate to where we downloaded our key pair, which was the laravel.pem file. And I'll go ahead and click open and then I'll click on connect. And then just like that, we can uh, add a new database. Uh, we can add rows to our database. But this way we can easily access our database so we can view values uh, and we can view how the table is structured. And it's very simple to be able to log into SQL Pro and then view that way as opposed to doing it via command line. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and happy programming.